Greetings. I'm here today with Aslan Zafar, co-founder and CTO of Deep Render, a British company developing the next generation compression technology using artificial intelligence. Aslan's here to talk about how his company is using AI with compression, what results they've achieved so far, and how and when this technology will come to market. Good morning, Aslan. Thanks for joining me. Uh, morning, Jan. Uh, it's great to be here, uh, and I'm looking forward to our chat. Cool. Why don't you just tell us a little bit of background about yourself and your company? Uh, yeah, sure. My name is Aslan. Um, I'm the co-founder and CTO of DeepRender. Um, we're a UK and San Fran-based, uh, AI-based compression company. Um, our product and sales team is based in San Francisco, while tech team is based in London. My background is in um, spacecraft engineering, a bit of machine learning, and a bit of computer science. Uh, and it's been compression since then. Um, about DeepRender, DeepRender is uh, the world's only AI-based codec company. Um, we've been around for about five years, working on image-based codecs first, and then transferring on to video-based codecs. Um, yeah, we're about a team of uh, 35 to 40 people, and um, yeah. And, and how are you funded? You've got a, a nice funding story. Yeah, so um, we're um, actually funding fundraising right now for our Series A, but we've done uh, a seed a seed round before. Uh, so it's a combination of yeah, it's basically venture money. Okay. So most of the codecs that I've worked with traditionally, you know, whether it's AV1 or, you know, H.264 or hybrid block based, um, how does your codec compare to the traditional operation of those codecs? So um, a few years ago, around five years ago, uh, my co-founder and I, we looked at traditional codecs um, and then uh, uh, in parallel to that, we were studying machine learning. And then machine learning uh, was working extremely well and our idea was that can we apply it to compression um, and it turns out to be extremely extremely challenging so uh, we started working on uh, AI based codec um, around five years ago and the culmination of all that research has led to us building uh, an entirely novel encoding and decoding system um, purely based around machine learning operations so that's to say that it does not include any pre-processing steps or pro -pro post-processing steps like super resolution it does not involve any component uh, whether it be blocking DCT or, um, <laughs> yeah, from the traditional coding pipe, uh, pipeline is essentially uh, purely uh, a novel foundational algorithm that we've built. So at the very least, blockiness is dead with your codec. We'll never... We'll never yeah, see. exactly. We don't see blockiness. We see some other stuff which you don't yeah, see yeah. in the codex, but yeah, blockiness is not there. Talk about how you use machine learning to uh, train an algorithm that does compression. All machine learning is um, uh, built on the premise of uh, seeing a lot of samples um, and updating your weights according to those samples. So uh, an algorithm would essentially see a sample. Uh, it will have an objective function, what it's trying to achieve. Um, it will um, it'll make a prediction about the objective function using a sample. Uh, ultimately, it will be really bad at the start, but if you uh, give it enough samples, and I'm talking about millions of samples, and you update the objective function or, or the parameters of this network according to the objective function enough times, the hope is that it lands in a place where now it's um, um, satisfying the objective function well. So that applied to compression essentially means take millions of images, uh, pass them through uh, a network, um, formalize the rate distortion trade-off in a differentiable way such that you can actually make updates once you've done all of that, you press play, you wait a week, <laughs> and you come back, and then you have this nice model, an encoding system, and a decoding system, which produces a bit stream in the middle, and the bit stream is really, really, really small, and the output is still really good. And that's how you end up with the AI-based codec system. Okay. What, what progress have you made to date, either in your still image compression or your video compression? Meaning, you know, let's not talk about commercialization quite yet, but in terms of savings as compared to H.264 or HEVC, which seems like the codex most, most companies compare their, their technologies to. Actually, we've been recently comparing to um, VVC. So I can comment a bit on that and I can say uh, we're seeing about 15 to 20% coding gains on top of VVC. Um, and so, I mean, for us, we're pretty happy with that because um, it, it hasn't been that long since we've been working on it. And we still think there's a, there's a lot of room to grow because uh, AI-based codecs are still new, relatively new, uh, and internally we're seeing we're see we have uh, internal research which suggests that uh, coding gains 
Um, there's still a lot more to come. We're seeing about 30% year-on-year improvements. And by the end of the year, we hope to be at least 45% um, better than VVC. Okay. I mean, it's always the decode that's the problem. So what are you, what are you requiring on the playback side to, to achieve, you know, to, to play back that 45% more efficient stream than VVC? So one of the benefits of AI-based compression we've just touched on, which is the compression performance. Another uh, very novel uh, but super interesting thing is the hardware. So uh, AI-based codecs and therefore DeepRender is um, entirely breaking this dependency on a hardware cycle. We're shifting codecs from uh, a hardware-based um, industry to a software-based industry. AI-based codecs essentially run on neural processing units. You might have heard of these. Uh, these are becoming prolific and they exist on almost all edge devices going back to the iPhone 8. Um, and they, they, a similar trend applies to uh, Qual the Qualcomm and the MediaTek chips. So these um, uh, uh, neural processing units are becoming um, general hardware. Uh, and, but for us, they're specific because they're actually specific for AI compute. And therefore, um, we're able to roll out um, quite fast um, across a broad range of devices and execute on these NPUs. So um, to answer your question, uh, most devices most N NPU devices we can roll out with. Uh, that currently results in about a 50% um, worldwide coverage and quite a mm. higher coverage uh, in the Western markets. And another interesting point is that the trend of uh, NPUs improving in their um, capacity, so TOPS, independent of a push from DeepRender uh, exists. So uh, we're just riding this wave of um, constantly improved, constantly improving uh, neural processing units, which essentially gives us higher FPS or lower wattage or even compre uh, improved compression performance, independent of any research that we need to do. So we have this like really nice trend that we're riding. Yeah, I would I would think since ChatGPT, there's been a big interest in including that type of hardware on almost every decode platform capable or possible. Yeah. Like I guess. Actually, companies have been okay. doing it for the last like five years, but now it's really, really gone up. Gone up, and people are even thinking about adding uh, specialized ASECs for transformer units. So not just generic ML compute, but actually specific ML operations. People are trying to add compute for that. But yeah, it's definitely a flourishing industry. Okay. Bottom line is, it's it's not a big retrofit market. It's really looking forward, not not backward so much, because you you are looking for that specialized hardware on the playback side. Um, yeah, but I would say this exists generally, so it's not it's, this is not a constraint. This is, um, it exists in a broad enough capacity such that it makes the rollout process quite easy and AI Codex quite valuable. So it's not the case that AI Codex will only work in five years because only then will you have a critical mass of users. Uh, critical mass users already exists now because people have been rolling out uh, uh, yeah. NPUs for the last five years. Well, you're not going to displace H.264 um, in, you know, next week. That sort of coverage is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what um, do you have any iterations of your product that are already commercially available? Yeah, currently uh, we're actually working with most of the big streaming uh, players to do initial assessment and uh, technical evaluations, uh, proof of concepts, uh, and we're expecting rollout uh, for the use case of cloud gaming and video conferencing towards the end of the year. So we're engaged, but uh, rolling codex, rolling codex out is extremely tough, especially if your main business is um, delivering video. You can't just adopt a new codec um, in a very hand wavy way. So there's a lot of like um, back and forth that's currently happening on that front. Okay, what about you know home delivery? The, one of the audiences we're addressing here is the broadcast. I mean, when do you see uh, deep render codecs available for playing in the home? You know, via broadcast and HDR type feeds. Where uh, so that would require. Uh, DeepRender is currently working on that, and we expect a rollout on these services. Uh, and in that, I'll add the category of Netflix and Amazon uh, Prime and Co. Uh, we expect to have a rollout on that uh, mid next year, so around uh, halfway through around 2025 um, is when we see rollout happening in that category. Okay. I mean, are, did, did televisions have the type of uh, AI-capable hardware you talked about? Do smart TVs have that? They've, uh, they've recently started adding them. Okay. They are catching up okay. to it now. Aslan, thanks for taking the time this morning. Um, good to see you, and uh, you know we'll talk later. Thanks, Jan. Uh, it's been really fun.